Today, we're gonna to be testing out seven awesome new features that are part of the new Adobe XD update. Before we begin, I wanted to mention this video sponsor, Skillshare.com, which is an online learning community for creators with over 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. So whether you want to fuel your curiosity, your creativity, or even your career, Skillshare is the perfect place to do just that. For instance, you're about to watch my Adobe XD video, but you could watch these full Adobe XD courses at Skillshare. Skillshare is also super affordable with an annual subscription of being less than 10 bucks a month. But if you're one of the first 500 people to click on the link here in the description in YouTube, then you get the first two months 100% free. So join up. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of Corsetro.com. So today's exciting because I get to show you both what these are and also how to use them. And they are seven brand new features in the Adobe XD update just from yesterday. So if you haven't updated yet, get out your Adobe Creative Cloud application and click update. And these seven new features are awesome. We have guides that we can now use. There's new type features. There's also editable, responsive, instance-based components. There's a polygon tool, which is very flexible and easy to use. There's a keyboard and gamepad trigger. That's a new trigger type that we can use in the prototype mode. There's also linked assets for design systems, and this is a huge one. And there's also a new share option meant specifically for front-end developers. So I'll show you exactly what these are and also how to use them. First, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and click on the bell notification icon. All right, so you're here in a new document in Adobe XD. I just have an iPhone uh, artboard open here, and let's get started. So the very first thing I'm going to show you, uh, once we get this little uh, nav bar kind of worked up here real quickly, we'll just give it um, just like a almost a black color right there. The first thing I'm gonna show you is that is new to this update are the guides. So if you hover over either the, t the left or the top, you'll see the icon change we can simply just left click and drag it over and we now have our guides. So uh, the way you get rid of them, just put them right back. Very, very simple stuff. All right, so if we wanted a guide here, we could see that it, it denotes at the top where it says 17, that's how many units it's from the left side. Uh, it'll switch over as well. It'll let you know, you can see it there kind of both on the right and left, which is very handy. So I'll just leave this here for now and we'll use the type tool and that'll bring us to the next new feature. So let's say, um, I'll just put in design course like that. And real quickly, I'll update my type. And now, now that we have our type in here, let's say for instance, we wanna see what it looks like in all caps. Well, this is the new feature over here, uppercase, lowercase, and also title case. So we can switch between all three of these very easily now. Awesome, awesome stuff. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at components. So there used to be what's called symbols where you could take a reusable element and you would be able to put it across different artboards or different areas of the same artboard. And if you make one adjustment to one of them, they all change. Well, that was a little bit inflexible uh, because what if for instance, you wanted to make a certain specific change uh, through the color or the size of something um, and you don't want it to necessarily replicate across all instances of that uh, symbol. Well, you weren't able to do that. So now you can with what are called components. All right, so a component can be a lot of different things, anything that's reused multiple times throughout your design. Uh, so for our case, let's say we would want a component for like this, this uh, header slash nav bar area. Well, real quickly, I'm gonna make a hamburger icon menu with the line tool. All right, I made just a couple adjustments here. And let's say we want this whole thing to be a component. Uh, we'll have, say for instance, an iPad version and desktop version. We wanna use it across all of them. Well, to make it into a component, you can uh, right click it with everything selected that you wanna be a part of that component right here and choose make component or just control or command K. All right, so we could see this little uh, green outline along with this uh, sort of icon right here, this, this square. And this means it's the master instance of the component. All right, so what that means is, if, let's say for instance, uh, let's, let's put this to use. Let's create a new artboard. Um, we'll click on an artboard tool, we'll just choose iPad over here. And we want to bring this over here. Um, so we can control D to duplicate, hold shift just to drag it into this iPad artboard. And let's go ahead and now 
drag it across. Of course, as you can see, it's responsive. And now this one, as you will see, does not have that little icon in the upper left corner. All right, so that's because it's just a, a, an, an instance of it. If we wanted to change uh, this over here, we could do so very easily. Let's say we wanna change the background color. All right, very easy. This is how the same behavior that you would expect from uh, the symbols. But what's changed here is when we take one of these other instances of the component and we make a change to this one, you will see that it doesn't affect the other ones. And it, so we could have, say for instance, another in, instance of this, I uh, will change this. You can see it doesn't change the master component or any of the other components, which is very, very handy. If you're working on a big project, you will have definitely ran into this issue if you were using symbols previously, uh, where you just wanted to make some sort of change uh, to it. So it doesn't have to be the change of color. It could be a change of uh, a lot of different things. So for instance, uh, let's say um, on this larger version, let's say we want to increase the size of this. Maybe we'll make it a little bit thicker and we'll move over our text. We'll increase the size. So we can change all of these elements like this without worrying about affecting any of the other instances of the component. But we can still change anything that's still the same across the other components if we adjust something on the master component. So for instance, if we wanted to change the color of the uh, type right here, we can see they're both white, the same exact color code. So we can go ahead and change it to, I don't know, something like this. And you'll see they will change accordingly. As long as you haven't made custom adjustments specific, uh, specific to one of the other child instances of that component. So very, very handy. This is a huge update that's really been um, in demand for quite some time. So I'm gonna do the same thing real quickly. I, we're, we're gonna create another component, but I'm also gonna show you a, another feature. It's the third feature um, that is really cool that they've integrated. So uh, let's go ahead and choose like a, a blue color here, perhaps um, something right around here. That's good. Let's go ahead and add it to our swatches and also let's add it to our colors. So we're gonna click on a panel. I'm not sure if you can see the icon right there. Click on that and choose colors, choose to add this here. And now it's a part of our asset colors. This is gonna come into handy to show another new feature down um, in a little bit. And let's come out and let's choose this new tool. So this is a brand new tool um, that we haven't seen yet, and that is the polygon tool. This is very exciting. So by default, it's just gonna give you a triangle. So I'm just gonna hold shift, get out a triangle size here, and we're going to get rid of a fill. We're gonna make a size uh, around five, and we'll make the fill just for now white. So the way this works, very simple. Two properties, really. That is the side count. So it gives you a ton of flexibility. Let's just choose seven there. And also a corner radius that works for any number of sides. Very awesome, I love that feature. Very intuitive, works exactly as you would expect. Um, so that is the other feature. So let's just kind of uh, make this a little bit interesting. I'll put it right there. We'll get out our layers. I'm gonna put this, we're gonna take both of these elements and put them beneath that section there. We'll thicken this up. All right, and let's say we're happy with this, all right? So this would be our hero component. And let's take everything right here and we will right click and choose make component or control K. And once again, we'll wanna put this underneath here. And we're gonna duplicate this. And we'll drag this all the way over. Very easy stuff. And once again, we may wanna make certain things a little bit higher or larger. So we can double click into here. And there you go. All right, so now again, we it, because it's a component, we can still make changes to this one. Uh, we can adjust the color if we wish, and it works exactly as you would expect. Awesome, awesome stuff. 
All right, so the next tool that's a part of the features here in the new update, I'm going to demonstrate by duplicating this artboard. I'm just gonna change one thing differently about this. Uh, maybe it'll just be the color of this section right here. Let's choose something that's yeah, right around there. Two different artboards, all right? So let's go to prototype. We'll drag this over. Um, well, we'll just do it. Uh, yeah, we'll just drag this over and we will choose a new trigger, which is the next feature, which is the fifth feature. Uh, we'll see under trigger, we have a new keys and gamepad, all right? So you could press a key to assign it. And so, I don't know, I'll choose F. No, let's just choose the right keyboard arrow. Sometimes you'll see on certain UI designs, I, it'll give you the option to use your keyboard if you want to navigate to different screens. Uh, so that makes sense. We'll leave everything else the same here and give it a shot. So I'm gonna hit the right keyboard arrow and there we go. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, so the next feature is huge, especially if you're working with multiple designers or a team of some sort. And this is linked assets. So I'm going to go back to a design. We're going to go to the assets panel and we can see we only have one color at the moment. Let's go ahead and double click into here. We're going to add this color from the background, which is almost a black right there. Um, maybe we'll add this one as well. All right, you get the point at this eye so far. So we can also add one of the character styles. So we'll just choose um, some type. We have monster at 13 points and 21 points. And we also have our two components, which you can double click and we can just change this to hero. And we'll change this one to uh, nav bar. All right, so these are the assets we're now working with. And in a real project, you would have a ton more of these. I mean, you'd have form elements for your components. You'd have just a bunch of stuff, your button styles. Um, it would just basically your design system that's contained within this assets panel. And you wanna be able to easily share with other designers the th this, this design system and all of these assets essentially so that they can create other designs that are perhaps a, a part of the same project or the same brand and also be able to quickly update these assets as well because you know design system the assets uh, the style guide it always changes uh, at least it's if it's an active company uh, with active designers <clears throat> so uh, the way this works is very very cool so let's show how this works the way you set this up is first we're going to save this to the cloud okay i'm just going to call this design course demo and we'll save it and it'll be ready momentarily now i uh, you go to share and you click invite to edit here all right so this is where you would add the email address of the people uh, that you want, obviously, perhaps they'd be other designers or whatever, and add it here, okay? Uh, and so for me, I'm just gonna be me, the owner, and we're still gonna demonstrate this uh, with two different XD documents um, to simulate exactly what's happening. It's so freaking cool. All right, so I'm going to get a new document out here, and let me just uh, bring this over here. All right, and let's say, for instance, you know, I shared this to whoever at whoever.com. And this is whoever at whoever.com's account right here. All right, and they're gonna start designing maybe a new mobile app for your company's design, but they want access to your design system and your assets essentially. Well, all they have to do is click on link assets and you'll see you have cloud documents. These are the cloud documents I've had stored here, but also shared with you. All right, so it says you have no shared cloud documents. Normally, if I invited, this is where this document right here and this design system would show up right here. But because I don't have another account, I'm just going to choose the design course demo. It's gonna do the same exact thing. So when we select it, we don't get this design right here, all of these artboards. All we get is the assets that are now linked. And that's obvious based on the fact that this has a link and it says it's up to date. All right, so if, you know, I choose, let's choose, actually, let's go ahead and take the hero component right here. Um, let's just put it right here for the heck of it at the very top. And you can see now if the head designer or whoever has control of this document, which is kind of like the master document of the design system, they can come by and say, hey, we're gonna change up our primary color. Uh, let's go ahead, right click and edit this. And we're gonna change it, I don't know, something to slightly different. 
right there. So if I save it here, instantly you'll see this document that's open perhaps in a different account, it'll le mention linked asset update available, give you some information about it. And what's really cool is uh, if we hover over it, it'll show you what has changed. I, and then you can choose to click it to accept it. Now, what's really cool is let's say they also want to um, update one of the component elements that you use. Well, let's say for instance, we change the color of this. Uh, maybe we'll change it to this color right here. That works. All right, so we can go ahead and save that. And now we can see this is highlighted and we hover over it to see what the change is. And this person could choose to not update it by not clicking it or by updating it and actually clicking it and it's ready to go. That is so freaking awesome. Now, the final feature that I thought was worth showing here is what is called shared for development. Now, usually when you're working within Adobe XD, you're a UI designer. Um, that's the initial phase of development for an app uh, of sorts, uh, when it comes to the aesthetics at least. The next process uh, is the handoff from the UI designer to the front end developer who, hander, who handles, not handers, the HTML, CSS, JavaScript, you know, basically all the coding that's essential to make this come to life in the browser or the mobile device or whatever. Uh, and sometimes one of the difficult things about that is what Adobe has discovered is, you know, people are complaining uh, because there was a lot of back and forth between the front end developer and the UI designer in that the front end developer would keep on asking and bugging the UI designer, you know, what size is this? You know, what exact color code is this uh, certain element? So they've really remedied that with this next feature. So I, the way we do this is after you've saved it, click share and you share for development. And that's the new feature. So if we choose share for development and we create the link, We'll get a public link here or private, depending on which things you use for privacy. And it's going to load up and it's going to show all the artboards by default. So we have our two artboards here. Um, let's just click on this one. And what's really great now is it has all the information that a front end developer would need in order to accurately and quickly I translate this into front end development code. So if we can click on specific elements. It's going to let, let them know the units here. Uh, it's going to give them a guideline. Uh, very handy. Each element you select, it's going to tell them the properties, the font, the colors, the opacity. This is great. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that and learned quite a bit. We're probably gonna be jumping into some of these features, especially um, the linked assets for design systems feature. Now that you know how to use it, I actually wanna create uh, a tutorial, maybe even a, a course about how to create design systems. And I'm sure Adobe XD will be an integral part of doing that because it's a great tool now for managing and cur curating and, and modifying your design systems. All right, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you very soon with a new tutorial. Goodbye.